thank you, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you. We bless you today, Lord. We bless you today. We bless you, we bless you. Hallelujah. We worship you, Father. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 You're a good God. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Hallelujah. Your mercies endure forever. Hallelujah. We worship you today. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We bless you today. Hallelujah. 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 We glory in your presence today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want everybody just to lay your hand on your chest. Those of you that are viewing with us today. I want you just to lay your hand on your chest. Just want you to begin to bless yourself. Just begin to ask God to minister to you today. Begin to ask the Lord to take out of you anything and everything that's not pleasing to him. Just to wash you in the blood of Jesus. Just to cleanse you. Hallelujah. From everything. From everything and anything that's not of him. Father, we thank you for the blood. The blood is strong. The blood is powerful, Father. The blood is purging. The blood is cleansing, Father God. Hallelujah. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Hallelujah. Though our sins might be as red as scarlet, the blood of Jesus will wash as white as snow. Thank you for the blood, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. We declare today, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You said that nothing, nothing can separate us from your love. Nothing can keep us from your love. Hallelujah. Nothing high enough, wide enough, deep enough. Hallelujah. Nothing bad enough can keep us from your love. You loved us from the beginning. You loved us in our worst state. You loved us, Father God. Hallelujah. When we didn't even know who you were. You loved us, Lord. And Father, now we return our love to you. We return our love to you. We can just say we love you, Father. Father, even in our inability to love, not even knowing what true love is, Lord God, this is what we count on you. We count on the Holy Spirit to teach us. Send your teachers, you'll guide us, you'll lead us, you'll direct us. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the love. Thank you for the love, and we love you back. We love you, we love you, and we bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. You saved us another day. You've given us another day. You woke us up today. Hallelujah. We woke us up, Father God, and we're clothed in our right minds, Lord God. We're able to walk and talk, and Father, we're able to comprehend, Lord God. Father, you, you raised up our families today, Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. Our children, thank our grandchildren, you. our spouses. Thank we you. thank you, Father God, once again. Thank you. Once again. Thank we you. didn't deserve thank it. Thank you. We didn't deserve it. But Lord, yes, in your you goodness, hallelujah, you. you're able to see through all of our badness. And we thank you for it. We thank you. Hallelujah. We bless you today. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Now I want you all to make this declaration with me. Say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I declare today, I declare today, I belong to you. I belong to you. And you are mine. You are mine. We are one. We are one. We are connected. We are connected. We cannot be separated. We cannot be separated. I'm married to you. I'm married to you. And I declare, and I declare through that covenant, through that covenant, that marriage covenant, that marriage covenant, we cannot be separated. Separated. We cannot be separated. I declare today. I declare today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. For invading me. For invading thank you. Thank you. For living in me. For living in thank me. Thank you. Thank you. For teaching me. For teaching me. Thank you. Thank you. For directing me. For directing me. Father. Father. I thank you. I thank you. For life. For life. Abundant life. Abundant the life. more than enough life. More than enough I declare life. today. I declare today. In Jesus' in name. Jesus name. That every promise. That every promise. Is mine. Is mine. I receive it. I receive it. I receive every promise. I receive every word. I receive every word. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare today. I declare today. Nothing. Nothing. Can stop me. Can stop me. Hold me. Hold me. Prevent me. Prevent or me. Delay me. Or delay me. From fulfilling. From fulfilling. What you have for me. What you have for me. I may not know. I may not know. What it looks like. What it looks like. I may not understand it. But I walk by faith. And today. I am. I am a person of faith. A person of faith. Father, Father, you said, you said it's, faith it's faith 
that pleases you. Allow me to please you today with my faith. I'll put all my faith in you. Not in man, not in this world system, not in my job, not in my ability, not in my education. I'll put my faith in you. Lord Jesus, Father God, and Holy Spirit, I have faith in you. You are able to do it. And I declare you will do it in my life, my family's life. Right now, right now, in Jesus' in name. Jesus name. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a shout of praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of y'all believe that? Hey! Lord, I believe that. Oh, yes, hey. Lord. Praise God. Amen. I believe that y'all may take your seats. Glory yes, to God. Yes. Thank y'all for joining in with us here today. Yes. Kingdom Life Ministries, we're here live and in person. And those of y'all that are viewing, uh, uh, streaming with us today, we welcome you in the name of our Savior, Lord. Uh, Jesus Christ, and uh, and we just want to thank y'all for tuning in today and being part of what God is doing here uh, in Kingdom Life Ministries in Elizabethtown. Once again, I'm Dr. Ray Romero with my pa uh, co-pastor Delilian Romero, and of course all our leaders here. We greet you in the name of Jesus, and we thank y'all for joining in, and we just believe that you're going to receive something from God today. Amen. Amen. It might just be a little nugget. It might be a morsel. It might be something small. Something that someone else may say, well, I don't see that, but you're going to get it because the Holy Spirit is going to enlighten you. Yes. The Holy Spirit is going to give you revelation. The Holy yes. Spirit is going to give you understanding. Yes. The Holy Spirit is going to open your spiritual eyes, your spiritual mind, your spiritual soul to receive something that God has for you today. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So this is our uh, healing school. Yes. So the first Sunday of the month as we do healing school. And, uh, and we kind of base it on the theme that we are rolling with at, at that moment in time. So our, our last series we did was Mind Elevation. And of course, Pastor Chris did an excellent job on how to elevate our minds to actually believe, receive uh, what God has already promised according to his word. Amen. And if it's in his word, you can receive it. Yes. Amen. I'm just going to tell you if it's there. It's a promise, it's yours, and you can receive it today, amen? amen? And so we've been on a series called The Shift. Yes. And so uh, Pastor Chris is going to bring a, uh, another uh, healing teaching, uh, but he's going to implement the shift in it. And uh, the shift is basically going from one place, one state of mind, one situation, one circumstance, yes. uh, one promise to another promise. He said this, the Word of God says, that he wishes above all things uh, that we would prosper, be in health, even as our soul prospers. Uh, he also said that we're going to grow from faith to faith and glory to glory. So there has to be a shifting that takes place. And, uh, and so that's where we are in this, in this teaching is shifting from one state to another state, from yes. one mindset to another mindset. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you, uh, since we started this, it has really worked. Amen. Because this is the word of God and it gets deep down on the inside of us and it builds an anticipation. It builds an excitement. It builds a new revelation and a new understanding. And so uh, we're shifting gears. Amen. Yes. We're shifting in another direction yes. and, uh, and we're moving in a new place. Glory to God. Um, and, you know, every year at the beginning of the year, they always come up with these nice, you know, little themes and sayings and. Uh, you know, people get motivated and excited. Well, this year I didn't really get anything until later on. Um, and then the Lord dropped this into my spirit uh, to prepare the people to shift. Because when God is ready to shift, you don't want to miss it. Amen. Amen. Uh, and I gave an example several weeks ago uh, about Moses. And God was telling Moses, it's time to shift. Yes. He, had, he had used Moses in mighty, mighty ways and miracles. And uh, when uh, there came a time that the, they were all in the wilderness and they were thirsty, and the people were complaining, and, and uh, the Lord told Moses to strike the rock and water would come forth, and he did that. Um, but then later on, it came to pass, same scenario, same situation. Uh, the people were thirsty, murmuring, complaining, and the Lord told Moses, this time, I don't want you to strike the rock. I want you to speak to the rock. Yes. Yeah. 
And Moses did not pick up on the shift. And he struck the rock. And water didn't come out. And then he struck the rock again. And then, of course, uh, the Lord is going to be true to his word. And he's going to provide for his people. And water came forth. But Moses missed his opportunity of shifting, which caused him not to be able to go into the promised land. We don't want to miss our opportunity. We don't want to miss it. So the shift is designed to prepare us and enlighten us that when it's time for God to do something, I don't want to catch up on this three months down the road and say, oh, that's what the Lord was telling me. Oh, that's what he was doing. I want to know when he's doing it and why he's doing it at that specific time. Amen? Amen. So, that's my brief introduction. I'm getting ready to turn it over to Pastor Chris as he comes and he ministers the word of the Lord to us. Amen. So, if y'all would stand up one more time, put your hands together as our son in the Lord uh, comes and ministers the word of the, God, of the Lord to us. Amen? Come on, put your hands together. Amen? Amen. Bless you, sir. Bless you, Pastor. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Wow. You all can have a seat. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, today, mm -hmm. we are going to go through some things. Mm -hmm. And where healing is concerned, um, and shifting is concerned, this is a really big piece. So, I'm just going to get right into it because i got a lot of ground to cover. Okay. okay, so this is, we're going to shift our understanding about what it means to walk in the Spirit. Okay. 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 We are going to define what Spirit is and what flesh is. Mm. Here's my goal for you today. All right. Is that we will be able to define practically mm -hmm. from Scripture what it actually means to walk in the Spirit. Mm. Also, to define what it is to walk in the flesh. Okay. We're going to define that. We're also going to look at what it actually means to be in the Spirit. Mm. And here's a thought. How did we even get into the Spirit? Come on. Okay. Here's another one. Can we be in or out of the Spirit? All right now. All right. And I believe that's it right there. There we go. I got my points. So we got them out of the way. So let's go. Right. Father, we just thank you right yeah. now for everything that you're going to do. I thank you, Lord, for wisdom and understanding released to every ear that you hear. That's not only here, but any of you who are listening by whatever streaming device you may be listening to, be it Facebook or YouTube, we just thank you, Father, that they are hearing with clear understanding. And above all things, I declare that the filter and lens by which everything shall be said and everything shall be received will be love. Mm. And we thank you. Amen. 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 All right. So the first shift on walking in the spirit is to walk in the spirit actually means to take on the name of the spirit, mm. to take on the nature of the spirit. All right. Okay. So let's define what spirit is. Mm -hmm. Spirit by definition in scripture means when, it means breath. Come on. It also means mind. Mm. So you have your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And it also means animation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you're talking about defining spirit, now wind, it's not that spirit is wind. Jesus <coughs> actually talks about that to Nicodemus at night one night and says that um, the spirit is like, you know, it's like the wind. You know, you can't see where the wind comes from and you don't know where it goes, mm -hmm. but you can see its effects. Right. You can see what it does. Yeah. Okay. So the definition of the spirit is seen in the animation of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Like right now, you are seeing animated spirit right now. Mm -hmm. My body is moving. Mm -hmm. There is a spirit that is animating and moving my body. All right. It's like a glove. If you take the glove and you put a glove on your hand, then whatever happens to the glove with your hand in it happens to your hand. Okay, if you put your hand in water with the glove, guess what? The glove gets wet and your hand gets wet. Right, right. Okay, so that's the way it works where your spirit is concerned, is that you in this body. Mm -hmm. And listen, you should know this. I can take water out of a sink and I can put it in a bottle and it doesn't change the fact that it's still water. Right. 
It did not. It did not lose its value of what it was mm -hmm. because it changed places and went into a bottle. Okay. Likewise, you do not become not a spirit because yeah. you're in a body. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 All right. Yeah. So when we're defining flesh now, mm -hmm. flesh is your body, mm -hmm. the physical nature of who you are. Mm -hmm. This is what your body is. The external things of what your body is so when you see flesh in scripture where this is concerned the basic understanding is it is your physical body it is the physical nature of who you are so let's move into this all right so watch this in genesis 1 where you see the creation of things and then when we get to genesis 2 it says that God breathed into man the breath of life. Yes. Okay. Now, what you have to understand is that everything in Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Yes. And everything that was created. When God breathed into mankind, God breathed his DNA, very logic for all of creation into Adam. Come on. Yes. Okay. Now, Adam, as you need to know, was not the first man's name, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was actually a title ascribed to a race of beings. Okay. And it means those in whom the Spirit of God lives. And the actual rabbis would call it, the Spirit of God has come and dwelt inside the dirt. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that dirt is physically now alive and moving and animated as a person. Perfect. Okay? And so... Adam, the first man, the race of Adam, mm -hmm. was made after the image and likeness of his creator. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to see something. Just like when we take uh, an apple seed produces what? Apples. apples yes. An orange seed produces orange. Yes, sir. Okay. Like produces like after its own kind. Right. So when God made man and woman, God was making them after his own likeness. Like produces like. Mm -hmm. This is how Adam was able to take and name all of the animals. Mm -hmm. Gave them purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay, and watch this. Put mankind in the garden, his wife, him and his wife, in the garden to guard it and protect it and take care of it mm -hmm. As God in the earth. Come on now. With the same likeness okay. and everything of God. Right, right, right. Okay. See, we've got to change our idea about, because most of the time when we think of God, we say, well, God's in heaven. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. guess what? Come God on. created heaven. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, where was God before that? Mm -hmm. Come on. Heaven came out of God. Uh -huh. Earth came out of God. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then when God made Adam and his wife, after his own image and likeness, mm -hmm. they were put in the garden mm -hmm. to tend the garden and to guard it. Now, you know what they did not do? Mm -hmm. Mankind was not in the garden saying, well, you know what? Anytime now, I think we're probably going to get all that God has for us. Mm -hmm. Something, you know, God hadn't given it all to us yet, but... You know, I'm just wondering if God has something else. Mm -hmm. No, that came to them as a lie. Mm -hmm. The enemy came to them and tempted them with a lie right. to try to get them mm -hmm. and did get them to believe that, hey, God left something out and you're missing something. Yeah. And that was not the truth. Mm -hmm. That was actually the beginning of darkness when they believed the lie yeah. that there was something <clears throat> That they did not have that God had, mm -hmm. which made them not like God. They began to go, let me do something to try to become something. Mm -hmm. And when they did that, watch this, the darkness was in them believing mm -hmm. that there was something that they did not have like God. Mm -hmm. When they were made after the very image and likeness of God. Mm -hmm. They functioned like God in every yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So... And here's, here's something else you need to understand. Inside of the breath of God mm -hmm. is the wisdom and nature of God. Come on. So watch this. Watch this now. Let me explain what I mean. The eagle has the breath that was given it to live. Mm -hmm. Inside of the very breath of the eagle is its logic to function and think like an eagle. Mm -hmm. It is the wisdom to function and think like it's made. Mm -hmm. Likewise, 
the one in the water, a dolphin, has the logic and wisdom of a dolphin. Yes. It's going to be able to do things in the water and think a certain perspective in the water that the eagle won't even think of. Right. Because the eagle is not made for the water. The eagle is made for the air. Yeah. The dolphin is made for the water. Right. Right. Likewise, we are given the breath of God. And within the breath of God is the wisdom and the nature of God. Come on. So if you're going to take on the name of the Spirit, which means to walk in the Spirit, mm -hmm. then you have to start by taking on the mind of the Spirit. Come on, come okay? on. This is what it also means when you define Spirit. It's the mind and the thoughts. Mm -hmm. Okay, So your very thoughts okay, are actually Spirit. Mm -hmm. Why do I say that? Because your thoughts speak. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts will be... You, you, come on now. We'll be having a whole conversation. You, you ever... Have somebody come and start talking to you, and they talk, and they start off mid sentence, yeah. and they're seemingly in the middle of a thought, and you have to stop them. Like, whoa, wait a minute, what, 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 what are we talking about here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know this because I do it all the time to my wife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll start talking about something, and she'll be looking at me with this weird look, yeah. and I'm looking at her with a weird look. Like, wait a minute, how come you're not understanding right. what I'm saying? Yeah. And she'll stop me. She said. What, what were you talking? You just started mid thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of the middle of your head yeah, talking, yeah. I was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Let me go back because in my head, this is the way it was, and I just started sharing it with you it's out of nowhere." Yeah, yeah. So your thoughts, uh -huh. okay? So let's go to Galatians five verse sixteen. Yeah. Let me take the text. So we're legal here. Okay. <laughs> there you go. All right. So watch this. Galatians five sixteen says this. Okay. But I say, I am reading from the ESV, okay. walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Right. Mm. Right. Now, I have been taught this and this has been read to me, mm -hmm. and I intend fully to shift your understanding Come on. today about what it means to walk in the Spirit. Come on. Because we have treated it like something that you're in the Spirit came out of the spirit. Uh -huh. I'm in the spirit. Yeah. I'm out of the spirit. Right. I'm in the spirit. Yeah. I'm out of the spirit. Or maybe it goes like this. You know that thing? She loves me. She loves me now. Uh -huh. It's like, God loves me. God doesn't like me. Uh -huh. God loves me. God didn't really like me. Uh -huh. And it's like we're bouncing. This is how we were taught. And okay, I went to church this week. I read my Bible every day this week. I've been praying every day. Man, I am so in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Or, man, I haven't been to church in a while. I haven't prayed in a while. I don't really read my Bible that much. Man, just not in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So watch this. Mm -hmm. Luke 9.23. Mm -hmm. Okay. Luke 9.23. Let me go there. We're going to we're gonna cover a lot of ground today. Mm -hmm. uh, Luke 9.23. It says this. And he said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Mm -hmm. Now, let me shift your understanding on that. Because what we've been taught, I have to beat the flesh up. Mm -hmm. I have to kill this flesh every day. Paul said, I die daily. I got to get this flesh every day and I got to put it in check. But watch this. First of all, when the apostle Paul was saying that I die daily... He was not talking about beating up your flesh. Mm -hmm. He was actually speaking of he faces death in every city that he goes into daily All right. because of what he was into. Mm -hmm. That's actually what the, that, that right there is what that text meant. So if you've ever read that text and it's been preached, mm -hmm. see right there, we got we to gotta get this flesh every day. Paul says it. Mm -hmm. That's not what Paul was talking about. <laughs> and... Let's go over here to Jesus when Jesus said, so what does he mean here? Take up your cross daily. What's that about? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's watch this now. How many people, besides Jesus now, it was known that when you were going to the cross, it was a one-way trip. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Wasn't coming back. Mm -hmm. You know, you were going to die. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Bottom line, mm -hmm. it wasn't going to be after they crucified you. Okay, uh, Jesus, let's come back. Let's just do this tomorrow too. Mm -hmm. 
It didn't happen like that. Crucifixion, it was a one-time thing. So what was Jesus saying? He was saying, let this in... Uh, Philippians 2, 5 says this, let this mind be in you. Yeah. He was talking about let the mindset uh -huh. of this be in you. Uh -huh. That you are crucified. This is a one-time thing. Uh -huh. Once you've been crucified, you can't crucify yourself. Uh -huh. Okay. Once you've been crucified, now the only other thing after that is <laughs> resurrection. Okay. okay. So... To walk in the Spirit yes. is to take on the name of the Spirit, mm -hmm. which is the nature and essence of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's going to be Jesus. Yeah. And you walk out the name of that Spirit with the attitude that you are that Spirit. Mm -hmm. This is done by completely taking on your thought, the thoughts of the Spirit, while circumcising your own so that they become one with the thoughts of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. Come on. Okay? So, to walk in the Spirit yeah. is to take on the name of the Spirit. Yes. If you take on the name of the Spirit, as Pastor said earlier, it's taking on as a marriage covenant. Mm. Right. Okay? Listen, my wife and I don't walk around every day and say, okay, I have your name, I don't have your name. Mm -hmm. I have your name, I don't have your name. Mm -hmm. We're married, we're not married. Yeah. Don't work that way. Mm -hmm. Okay? We're married, that's it. Right. Even though she's not here and I'm here, guess what? I'm still married. Still married. Period. Yeah. Doesn't change it a bit. Uh -huh. Everything I do, I do with her in mind that I'm not on an island by myself. She is with me. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, 1 John 4.17. Let's go there. Mm -hmm. 1 John 4.17. I'm using a lot of scriptures here. Okay, 417. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Watch this. By this is love perfected with us mm -hmm. so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment because as he is, yes. so also are we in, in this, this world. world. Yes. Mm -hmm. Say this with me. Say as Jesus is. As Jesus is. is. So am I, so am I in this world. In this world. Let's say it again like you mean it. As Jesus is, as Jesus is, so am I, so am I in this world. In this world. All right. So 1 Corinthians 11, 1, uh, Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. How do you imitate Christ? Yeah. You imitate Christ by taking on the thoughts of Jesus yes. as your own. Uh -huh. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's go there, starting in verse 10. Okay, mm -hmm. verse 10. Mm -hmm. All right. And hey, let me back up a little bit okay. to verse 9. Okay, now we're going to shift another thing. Mm -hmm. Come on. Here we go. But as it is written, verse 9, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. Mm -hmm. Now, religion always quotes half a verse. Mm -hmm. We always stop there. And most of our churches, we stop right there and we will preach. See that right there? Mm -hmm. Nobody really knows. No eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for him. See that? We really don't know what God has prepared for us. Let's continue and see what else is said. Excellent. These things, verse 10, yes. God has revealed to us through the Spirit. Mm. So God reveals to us through the Spirit. Now, let's go back to our definition. One of the definitions of Spirit is mind. mind. Also, thoughts. Okay? So when we're talking about the Spirit of God, we can... Also say the thoughts of God. Yeah, yeah. So the thoughts of God are also the spirit of God. Uh -huh. And the spirit of God is also the thoughts of God. Yeah. Makes sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me keep reading. For the spirit mm -hmm. searches everything, even the depths of God. Mm -hmm. Now that word searches is not searches like the spirit is lost trying to find something. Absolutely. That word searches means that there's nothing left out. Come on. 
If there's nothing left out, even all the way to the depths of God, there is nothing that is left out from you. Do you realize it says that if he given us his son, he shall not withhold anything from us. I don't know where we get this language today of saying that, well, there's something, there's always going to be something about God we're not going to know. Mm -hmm. We can never really know the love of God. So let me ask you a question. Did, okay, if we are joined to Christ, okay, we're either joined to Christ or you're not. Mm -hmm. You either have it settled that you are or you aren't. Mm -hmm. It's John 1 says that all things were made and created through Christ. Right. All things. Mm -hmm. So watch this. So either you have the mind of Christ mm -hmm. joined to Christ or you don't. Mm -hmm. Did Jesus question the love that the Father had for him? Mm -hmm. No. Did Jesus have a greater revelation? Watch this now. Mm -hmm. Did Jesus get a greater revelation of the love of the Father after his Death and resurrection? Or did he already have it before? So why do we come up with this thing that says, oh, when we get to heaven, we're really going to know the love of God. Really? So you're telling me that Jesus was able to know and experience the love of the Father before any of that, but only Jesus gets that and we all have to wait till heaven. You know, it might be the reason why some people aren't that interested in the gospel we preach. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. Our selling point's kind of weak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if you're telling me that all the good stuff happens after I die, what do you think I'm going to do? Yeah, go, right. Oh, well, yeah. I might as well wait till I just get over here to the deathbed and then I'll just go ahead and say that little prayer you say I got to say to get in and hey, we're good. Yeah. Why am I going to come over there now? Listen, I was talking to some people the other day, and they were talking about, you know, I, I like it how, you know, Excellent. when people go, when you have men and women of God, especially in our church culture circles, I mean, all that I remember is these people come out, no expression, mm -hmm. serious, on the front row. Mm -hmm. Just no expression, no laughter, mm -hmm. serious. It's the anointing of God. Mm. Really? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I mean, Excellent. Jesus had no personality. Are you serious? Excellent. I think that throws people when they Excellent. find out Excellent. Jesus laughed. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Jesus cracked jokes. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I know it may be hard and difficult for people to just kind of fathom that. But let's move on here. Okay, let me keep reading. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. Yeah. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? There you, go, you see that? Excellent. So also, yes. no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. yes. So where's the spirit of God? Mm. Mm. If no one comprehends the thoughts of God except for the spirit of God... Where is the Spirit of God now, man? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's what we're here to find out today. Come on. <laughs> All right. Verse 12. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, mm -hmm. that we might understand the things freely given to us by God. Mm -hmm. So it just said that. We have received the Spirit from God. Yeah, yeah. So no more of this God works in mysterious ways we just never know type stuff. Mm -hmm. Now let me say this. To be fair, you don't really have to know the method by which God's going to do it. You just need to know that God has committed himself to already do it. Come on. Right. God has already committed that the work is yeah. finished. Yeah. You can, it's settled. Yeah. You can take it to the bank. Yeah. You know, when we bought a, uh, our water heater went out, I was told that there was a certain brand that is the top brand of water heaters. Mm -hmm. And that's the brand I got. Why? Because it's trusted. They've got a history. They've got a track record. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with God, likewise, you have received the spirit that is from God. Mm -hmm. So say that with me. Say, I have, I have received, received the spirit, the spirit 
from God. From God. All right, let me keep reading here. Verse 13. And we impart this in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truth to those who are spiritual. Verse 14. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Let me explain what it means for that. Okay. Jesus said, you can't take new wine and put it into old wineskins. You have to take new wine and put it into new wineskins. The wine skins represent the framework that you've been taught to live and think from. Yeah. Okay? So, so, so watch this. If the framework in the way you see God, I just ministered to a gentleman early this morning around 7 o'clock. I got a text asking, could I talk? And one of the things that I shared is that, okay, if your framework about God is God's just going to punish me when something happens, I'm really not loved by God like that. Man, I'm really messing up so bad. I know I've disappointed God. Mm -hmm. If your framework about God does not match the way Jesus saw God, mm -hmm. that is idolatry. Mm -hmm. Come on. Let's we'll say that again. Come on. If the framework by which you see God has God looking like someone you have to walk around on eggshells with, if the framework by which you see God is that when you mess up, you want to go hide in a corner somewhere and have nothing to do with God because you just know God's going to hit me with something. Mm -hmm. Or when something bad happens, you're like, yep, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm probably, God's probably punishing me for what I did that 10 years ago. I knew it was going to catch up with me. I knew it. If that's your framework, I'm going to say it again and say it boldly. That is idolatry. Mm -hmm. Because it does not mirror and match the, the, the image that Jesus revealed, the Son. Yes. Jesus came and said, no one knows the Father but the Son, and no one knows the Son but the Father. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal the Father. Yes. In other words, Jesus was saying, I want to reveal the Father. Yeah. But I can't show you the Father under the framework that you're currently in. Because the framework that Israel was in at that time was under the Mosaic Covenant framework. Yeah. That framework was a covenant of death. Mm. That's what it says. It says the law came by Moses, but grace and truth come by Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. You can't be a disciple of Moses and a disciple of Jesus at the same time. Yeah. If you're a disciple of Moses, then you're cheating on Jesus. Yeah. If you're a disciple of Jesus trying to hang out with Moses, then now you're cheating on Jesus. Yeah. You have to pick one or the other. This is what Jesus meant when he said you cannot serve two masters. You are either serve the one, despise the other, cling to the one, and let the other one go. Yeah. But you can't do both. Yeah. There can't be a mixing of covenants. Yeah. You can't have the old covenant regurgitated as the American church has done and then want to lay grace on top of it and still hold on to law. Mm -hmm. Do you know why they want to hold on to that? Because it's called control. Yeah. Right. I have to control the situation. <laughs> right. I have to be the sin police. I have to make sure that if I don't do this and exercise this over them, man, I'm going to get in trouble. Why? Because most preacher, preachers have an identity crisis themselves. Yeah. They're not even sure of what God's love is for them. Mm. Why? Because they tell people every Sunday, we can ever know the love of God. And I can tell you right now, you're not going to hear that from me. Yeah. You won't hear it from many of the leaders here yeah. because you are able to know the love of God. Yeah. If he gave you his son, what else is he holding back from you? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. God is not holding anything back from you. If you want to understand how much God loves you, it simply starts with gratitude that says, I just thank you that I'm so loved. That's how you start. And as you just, I just thank you. Listen, do you realize this thing that we've done about you got to walk in love and you got to be in the spirit? We made that a work. Oh, you got to do this and do that. You realize you can only love to the measure that you believe that you're loved. Come on. To the measure that you understand the love of God will be to the degree that you can actually love somebody else. Mm -hmm. I can't love my, listen, I can only love my wife and my kids and my grandkids to the degree that I understand how loved I am by God mm -hmm. and I understand how loved I've always been by God. 
The more I am persuaded of how loved I am, the more I can rest and remain settled and how loved God is for me, the more I can release that. I'm going to share with you what that's like. It's like looking in a mirror. When you look in a mirror, your reflection can only do what the original can do. You are the original. I don't look in a mirror and my reflection starts doing something that I'm not doing. Mm -hmm. If I lift my right hand, my reflection lifts its right hand. Yeah. If I let my right hand down, my reflection lets its right hand down. Mm -hmm. This is what it means when Jesus said, I can only do what I see the Father doing. Right. So you can only love to the degree that you see love. Mm -hmm. You can't right. love outside of that. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you're trying to love based on willpower alone, I'm going to love, I'm going to yeah, love, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do it, I'm going to yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah. You might get a little bit like straight out of that. Uh -huh. But if you really want to go into this thing great and really know how to love, then it starts with you just accepting. I just thank you that yeah. I am so loved. Yeah. And nothing can separate me God. from that love. Amen. Amen. So watch this. Verse 16. Let me jump to that. For who has understood the mind of the Lord yes. so as to instruct him? But, say this with me, say we, we have, have the, mind the mind of Christ. Of Christ. Oh my gosh. It didn't say you were getting the mind no, of Christ. Right. No. It said you had it. Yeah. Got it. Now you might be wondering, well how come it doesn't look like I'm manifesting it? <laughs> Let me help you. Yeah. Okay. A few weeks ago, um, we were, my wife ordered some shelves for our downstairs basement for the laundry room. <coughs> When those shelves came in the boxes, there was two shelves. And on the outside of the box was a picture of the finished product. Mm -hmm. Now, when I got it, I opened the box and I had all the, it was in parts. Mm -hmm. It had an instruction manual. That instruction manual is a writing from the manufacturer, the creator. So the manufacturer can't go to everybody's house. So we're going to make an instruction manual. I'm going to put my logic and my thoughts about how this thing works onto this page. Right. And I'm going to give it to you. And it's going to show you how to work this mm -hmm, thing. Mm -hmm. So you take this and I put this thing together. Now, when I got the box of shell, the box, the shells were in, even though it was in parts. Did I have a whole shelf or not? Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. It wasn't put together, right? but I had a whole shelf. Yeah. Right. Likewise, you have the mind of Christ. Yeah. It is in you in seed form. Mm. Let me tell you something. A tree, when it begins to grow, it can never hold anybody in its immature state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't make it any less a tree. Come on. It just pushed through the ground, uh -huh. and it's just showing green, and it's showing leaves, and it's a little bitty old thing. But it doesn't make it any less of a tree. Right. Right. Many of us are right there in that immature state. Yeah. And we don't think we have any power. Mm. But the truth is, keep and remain rooted. Yeah. A tree doesn't grow because it gets up and keeps hopping around and goes over here and moves over there. No, the tree grows because it remains planted. Yes. Remain planted, watch this, mm. in the right stuff. Mm. It's like a pickle. Okay, a cucumber is made because they take that thing and they put it in brine solution. Mm. And guess what? They have to let it sit there for a while. Mm. It's not going to work if I just, whoop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've got to take it and I've just got to let that thing sit there yeah. for the amount of time it needs to sit. And then eventually, it takes on the nature of the environment that it was in. Mm. Likewise, take your thoughts. Yeah. Listen, the thoughts that say, I am not. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm going to deal with these thoughts. Mm -hmm. The thoughts that say, I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. The thoughts that beat you up at night and keep you up. Listen, some preachers will tell you, we need to cast those things out. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to tell you what to do. Scripture says to take them captive. Mm -hmm. So take that thought. Don't let it go. Mm -hmm. And we're going to baptize that I am not in Christ. Come on. Mm -hmm. And we're going to hold that thing yeah. in Christ. Yeah. <clears throat> and then what's going to happen yeah. That I am not thought is going to be transformed. Come on, come on, come on. And it's going to come up and resurrect as I am. I am. There you go. Come that on. thought that says that God only loves me so much. Yeah. We take that thought. Don't run from it. Yeah. Hold that thing in Christ. Come on, come on. And then eventually what happens, yeah. what resurrects is I am love. I'm love. Nice. 
Take those thoughts about that that you have about depression yeah. and my life isn't worth anything mm -hmm. and baptize it in Christ. Hold it in what Come God on. has said about yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't let it go. What does that look like practically? Mm -hmm. It is taking on what God has said about you, mm -hmm. okay, and you remain consistent with it. You become obsessed with it. Yeah. God is saying, I have always caused you to triumph. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So if you're having thoughts of being alone, you take that, you're by yourself. See that? You're in a room full of people and nobody is here with you. No, God will never leave you nor forsake me. You're alone though, but nobody has to. God will never leave you nor forsake you. But you're alone, but nobody's going to help you. God will never leave you nor forsake you. And you got, you, you hold on to that thing. Okay? Make a plan, Pastor. So watch this. Make a plan. So to walk in the spirit mm -hmm. is to take on the name of the spirit, mm -hmm. which is to take on the nature and essence of the spirit. Yeah, yeah. How do you do that practically? Mm -hmm. You take on the thoughts of God. Mm -hmm. You align God's thoughts with your thoughts. Here's what pride is. Let me shift your thinking in that. Pride is thinking of yourself in a different manner than what God is thinking about you. It's saying something about you that God didn't say about you. So if you say, I'm just not good enough for that. I got to do all this stuff to, before I can even go pray for anybody. Mm. Okay? Did Jesus say that? Mm. If Jesus didn't say that, then what you have said is, Jesus, the work you did wasn't good enough. I've got to go do this. Uh -huh. That's pride. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Let's define what it means to walk in the flesh. Oh, this is good. All right, watch this. Galatians chapter 5. Yeah. Again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go there real quick because I got to set you up for something. Mm -hmm. All right. Galatians chapter 5. Starting in verse 19. Come on. Okay. Here we go. Now the works of the flesh. Now I just want to tell you, the word for flesh in the Greek is called sarx. Yes. Okay. So watch this. The works of the flesh are evident. They are sexual morality. Impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Now, I need to clean something up here for a minute. When it says will not inherit the kingdom of God, that is not a reference to afterlife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's what the Apostle Paul is saying. These things will limit and quench your influence mm. in the earth of the Come kingdom on. of God. Come on. Mm. This is what this is. Mm -hmm. Because if you're walking in any of those, mm -hmm. then your influence is going to be quenched. Yeah. It's like taking a straw or a pipe, a water pipe that gets gummed up with calcium and everything, mm -hmm. and you got to clean that thing out so you get a clear, good push and flow. Yeah. Well, that calcium and all that stuff that builds up right there, that right there is what all of this represents. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? Now watch this. Now, let me take you to John 1.14. Mm -hmm. Keep Galatians 5, what we just read, in mind now. What all of it we just read. All right, here we go. John 1.14. And the word became... Everybody say flesh. 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 Guess what? That's the same word flesh that we use in Galatians. All right. <laughs> so the word became, and that word became isn't grew into. Mm -hmm. That word became means appeared and manifested in mm -hmm. and dwelt among us. And that word among us, phrase among us, yeah. it really should read dwelt within us. <laughs> it means in the spirit of within. Mm -hmm. So watch this. I know I'm, we're seesawing all over the place here, but I, you need to see this. You're well. Okay. Go back to Galatians 5. I should have told you to hold your place. Mm -hmm. I was a good kind good, of. good preacher like uh, <laughs> Dr. Romero over there. Mm -hmm. Would have said that. <laughs> so watch this. The word appeared mm -hmm. in within sexual morality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? That means Jesus has come in to your darkness. Mm -hmm. The word appeared within impurity, mm -hmm. appeared within sensuality, 
appeared within idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies. Jesus came in and manifested within all of that. Mm, come on now. Did not run from it. Yeah. It is the same exact word used in John 1.14. The same one is used here in Galatians. Nice. So what does it mean to walk in the flesh? Because Jesus, the word, became and appeared in that. Yeah, yeah. But Jesus wasn't sinful. Yeah. So what does it mean to walk in the flesh? Mm -hmm. Romans 8. Glad you asked. Mm -hmm. Romans 8. Mm -hmm. Okay. Romans 8, 5 says this. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Now watch this. Here's what the flesh is. Mm -hmm. To walk in the flesh is to walk without the thoughts mm -hmm. of the original blueprint of the creator that made it. Mm -hmm. So walking in the flesh, all of those things that you see are realities that were come out of separation. Mm. Okay? So, for Adam and them, whenever they, watch this, whenever they believed the lie that there was something they needed to do to become in the garden, mm -hmm. in that lie, this is where all this comes from. Mm. Sexual morality comes because, because sin and iniquity, it means twist. It, that's what perverse means. It means something that's twisted. You take something that is and you twist what is. Mm. When you twist what is, you make it an image of something that it wasn't when it was created. Mm. So all of these things, the works of the flesh, are things that are birthed out of separation. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you don't cure that by torturing it. Come on. You don't cure that by punishing it. Mm -hmm. You cure it by healing it. Come on now. That's how you cure that. You heal it. Yeah. Okay? Let me keep moving here. Functioning outside of original purpose, that would be work. When it says in Galatians, the works of the flesh, you know why it calls it works of the flesh? Mm. Because in Ephesians, it says your members are members and instruments of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Say it with me. Say, my members, my, my, members. my, body, my body, they are instruments, instruments. Of, righteousness. of righteousness. So when you do something like this, the reason it calls it work, you think it would be work mm. if an eagle tried to run like an ostrich? Mm. Mm. Think it'd be work for that eagle? Yeah. You think it would be work if an ostrich somehow managed to climb a mountain to a tree mm. and tried to jump off and fly with the little wings it's got mm -hmm. like an eagle? Be work. Yeah. Why? Because it's trying to do something it was never made in design for. There you go. Right. There you go. See, we were not made for any of those things and yeah. works of the flesh. Yeah. No one was. Yeah. Okay? This is how this works. Yeah. Amen. Let me keep going. Thanks, Pastor. How did we get into the spirit? Mm -hmm. This is a good one. You got into the spirit by a work not your own. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. How did Adam get into the garden? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. I mean, Excellent. Well, he just kind of thought, hey, you know what? This looks like a good place to camp. Let's go ahead and just set up the shop here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doubt it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. <laughs> God placed him in the garden. Yes. Yeah. And when he placed him in the garden, everything that Adam needed, God didn't go to Adam and say, or Adam didn't go to Adam like, you know what? I think we're missing something over here. I think, you know, Eve, she wants some drapes hung up over here. And, you know, we didn't get that chest we wanted. We need that. No, no, no. Everything they needed was there. Yeah. Right. Okay. So how do you get in the spirit? Mm. Ephesians 1.3 mm -hmm. It says we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing mm -hmm. in Christ. Mm -hmm. It says blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Mm -hmm. That's past tense. Blessed. Past tense. Mm -hmm. Verse 4, Ephesians 1, verse 4. Even as he chose us in him. In who? In him. Before uh -oh, oh, there it goes. the foundation of the world. What? Mm -hmm. yeah. That we should be 
holy and blameless before him in love. Yeah. I encourage you to read Romans 6, 1 through 14, and Colossians 2, 6. Mm -hmm. It talks about being crucified with Christ, mm -hmm. buried with Christ. You have to count yourself as that. Watch this. In Romans 8, I want to show you something. Mm -hmm. Okay, Romans 8, 9, or Romans 8, 8 says this. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Verse 9. You, however, are not in the flesh, mm -hmm. but in the spirit, if in fact. Now, that if is not a conditional if. That if is a statement telling you something that has happened. The spirit of God dwells in you. Yeah. Being in the spirit has nothing to do with something Oh, I'm just going to do this. Mm -hmm. It has everything to do with who's in you. Yeah. And the spirit of Christ in you, you are in the spirit. Mm. Now, I'll say this. If you don't take on the mindset of the spirit, yeah. the thoughts of the spirit, yeah. you won't walk out and reap the benefits of the spirit. Mm -hmm. That's actually what salvation is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Listen, there's another thing to shift. Salvation is not about being saved from. It's you're saved to. Come on. If I take leftovers of Thanksgiving, I'm saving them for later. Yeah. Why am I putting them in the refrigerator? Because I want to eat some later. Mm -hmm. I'm preserving them for something. Yes. Right. Right. Okay? Yes. I'm not keeping the leftovers away from somebody. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm saving them leftovers for a purpose. Yeah. That sweet potato pie and pumpkin pie has got a purpose. It's got a purpose for being in that refrigerator. So when I want some, yeah. I can go partake of it. There you go. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. So, all right. Let me finish up here. Can I be in and out of the spirit? Mm -hmm. Let's establish that. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 1.20. Mm -hmm. Let's go there. Now, I do this because sometimes we're real bad at taking traditions, and not really reading our Bible. So here we go. For all the promises of God find their yes mm -hmm. in him. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. The promises of God are yes in him. Mm -hmm. Who's him? Christ. That is why through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. Mm -hmm. So the promises of God are yes in Christ. Mm -hmm. And amen, so be it. Mm -hmm. The promises is a pre-given promise. It's got everything in it to complete it. It is already done. Mm -hmm. All you have to signature approval is you just receiving it. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right. And um, 21, verse 21, it is God who establishes us with you in Christ mm -hmm. and has anointed us mm -hmm. and who has put his seal on us yes. and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Right. Now watch this. That word seal means to attest ownership, validating what is sealed. Mm. So who sealed you? Did you seal you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. How many of us have been led in a prayer, Lord, yeah. I want to receive Adam into my life and uh, all the bad stuff that he did uh, so I can uh, take on this evil, bad nature. Mm. Come on. Never mm. We don't pray to the church. It's okay. Nope. It's okay. I'm just, you know. So, likewise, mm -hmm. okay, you didn't seal you. Mm -hmm. Jesus sealed you. Right? Yes. This starts, listen, you didn't even put yourself in the spirit. Right. So what it means to walk in the spirit is taking on the name of the spirit, the thoughts of God. Mm. Take on the thoughts of God to align your thoughts with God's thoughts. Come on. As you align your thoughts with God's thoughts, mm -hmm. your mindset, whatever your reference point in your mindset, this is where it starts at. Listen, if your mindset is that that's not Christ-like, and what I mean by that, mm. an unchrist-like mind doesn't start with, let me see how much sin I can get into. You may think it does, but that's not. Mm. An unchrist-like mind starts with you doubting how good God is. Come on. You seeing and marring God's image other than what Jesus revealed. Mm. That's where unchrist-likeness starts. Wow. And then as far as like being in the spirit, out, no, no, no. You are a spirit that is functioning the things of God 
good or bad, mm. based on where your mindset is. Glory. So if your mindset is that, you are so made like God, that if your mindset is that of fear, you will manifest the things of fear. Mm -hmm. Not because God wants you to. Right. But because you have self-sustaining power in you. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? That means, watch this, self-sustaining. When Apple has an update, Apple doesn't go to Android to get an update. Right. Apple works within its own resources <laughs> of Apple to do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Likewise, when Android has an update, Android doesn't go check it on Apple and say, hey, let me get my update from you. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work that way. Okay? Likewise, the self-existent, that's what Yahweh means, mm -hmm. is you functioning from inside your world. Your world is Jesus. Your thoughts are Jesus. Take on those thoughts of what Jesus has said in every area of your life. You will be so surprised. Mm. Because if you are manifesting stuff that is unchristlike, I want to submit to you, you are still in the spirit, but your mindset is different. Come on now. Why do you think there are people that can create things that are totally destructive to other people? Yeah. And you're thinking, why did God let them get away with that? They're a spirit. Yeah. If you don't think, listen, you're going to do one or the other. Mm -hmm. You will either renew your mind to align to think like Jesus, mm -hmm. or by default, you will think in another direction outside of Christ. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that right there, uh, I can't believe I made it through my notes. Oh, praise God. I made it through my notes. Praise uh, God. Amen. And so, uh, yeah, I skipped over. I didn't really skip over some things. I could have went deeper, but hey, I hope you got something that this yeah. shifted your understanding about what it means to be in the spirit. Yeah. You are in the spirit right now. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you go out and drive and you tell somebody they're number one. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you do that as a spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that might, that's not Christ-like, no. but guess what? You are still how you function and bring out. Listen, the first thing that has to happen is you have to align and adopt completely. Mm -hmm. The thoughts of Jesus have to bond to you as your own. Mm -hmm. You have to walk around is like, this is me. I am in Jesus. There's no separation. Mm -hmm. And I make thoughts like so. Praise God. That's where it starts. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Awesome. Hallelujah. Awesome. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Come on. Give God another shout of praise today. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Awesome. Hallelujah. Now, you know, I, I know, uh, and, and that's the kind of the, 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 the teaching that you get here from most of our leaders. Um, what we have to be able to do is, is what he said. We are in the spirit. You're saved. You're born again. Your spirit dwells on the inside of you. And the shifting does begin in your thoughts, in your mindset. And, uh, and I know this is our healing uh, school today. And so one of the things that, that, that he said that really ministered to me is taking something uh, that, that's evil or bad and baptizing it and when it comes back up it has taken up a different nature okay. so if i take my sickness today and i baptize that thing in the spirit and i baptize that thing in the word of god by speaking the word of god declaring the word of god and of course changing my mindset then i'm going to change that sickness into healing amen amen, amen. Oh I mean, yeah, and I said this before. I, I, I tried being sick, and I don't like being sick. Right. I, I, no. I mean, literally, I, I have. I've been sick, and guess what? I found out. I said I don't like it. I don't like it either. No, it's terrible. You know, it it, it is. Glory to God. Uh, I went to. I did my uh, my VA physical this this past week, and uh, and so I went in on Monday. They did my blood work and all that kind of stuff. And then I had um, the appointment with my primary care on uh, Thursday. And, uh, and when I walked in there, um, she, she was just, just amazed. She said, there's nothing wrong with you. Amen. Nothing wrong with you. She says everything, she, her words were, everything is perfect. Amen. It's just perfect. Amen. Okay. And, and, you know, I contribute that to 
Uh, of course, you know, there's, there's some, some physical things we have to do. You know, we work out, we try to eat right, all that kind of stuff. But the majority of it is just declaring and believing the Word of God. Amen? Amen. So, um, with that today, uh, I want to encourage you. Uh, change, shift how we see things. Shift how we've been taught things. And those are great uh, uh, examples in the Word of God on how we've seen things one way, but actually the truth is we've not been looking at them the right way. And so uh, I, I'm just excited about what I heard today, and, uh, and it's shifted some things in my life. Amen. Shifted some of those scriptures that I've been indoctrinated and taught that um, this is the way um, that they've been taught to us. And uh, so I've received a, a great deal today. Amen. Amen. Might have to go back and listen to it again so I can get some yeah. more. Amen. Amen. Right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray for you. We're going to believe God. Those of y'all that are watching, those of y'all that are here, there's something you're dealing with, something that, uh, uh, you know, some type of sickness, <laughs> disease, uh, anything. I know I got a couple of people out today. Uh, they hit me up earlier and said, you know, hey, uh, you know, we, I don't know if we have the flu. I don't know if we have a cold. We don't, I don't know if we have the the virus or, or whatever it is, but I do know this, whatever it is, God has the solution to it. Amen. Yeah, oh, yeah. What you got? Amen. Right. So we're going to baptize, baptize that thing in the spirit and in the word of God. And we're going to declare total healing today. Amen? Amen. So let's pray. Father, we thank you right now, Lord God. Father, every ailment, every sickness, every disease, every virus, every germ, Lord God, every ailment, Father God, Father, every type of sickness today, Lord God. Father, our mindset, Lord God. Every addiction, Father God. Lord, we just take that, Father God, and we take it to the cross. We take it, Father God, and baptize it in the Word of God, Father. We take that to the Spirit of God. And, Father, we thank you right now that, Father, it takes on a new a transformation. It takes on healing today. It takes on healing. We declare healing, Father, in every area of our life, Lord God. Father, there needs to be a healing in our mindset, the way we've been, things we've been taught, indoctrinated religiously, Lord God. Father, may there be a shifting and a transformation in our thoughts, Lord God. Father, may we think, know, and believe, Lord God, that, Father, you totally paid the price. It's done. It's finished. It's completed. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Behold, I become new today. I'm a new person. My mind's renewed. Yes. My body's renewed. My thoughts are renewed. My life's renewed. Yes. Father, even our finances, Lord God. Some of us, we, we need healing in our finances, Lord God. Father, we just baptize them in the blood of Jesus, Lord God. We baptize them in the spirit of God. We baptize them in, in your word. We just saturate them in your word today, Lord God. And Father, as they come up, they're going to be transformed. They're going to be changed, Lord God. And Father, we thank you for it. We believe you and we receive it today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And everybody says, Amen. 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 Glory Amen. to God. Well, hallelujah. We want to thank y'all for joining in with us today. Uh, Kingdom Life Ministries International here in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Again, I'm Dr. Ray Romero. That was Pastor Chris Harris, who you yes, heard speaking. Hallelujah. But you can also pick up uh, Bishop Bill Templeton's uh, teaching on last Sunday on shifting. Uh, and combine those. Look at them and, and listen to them. And you're going to see a lot of similarities in there on what he taught and what we heard today. And, uh, and so uh, we thank God for it, and we thank God for you all. Again, um, if you're watching and, um, and you want to sow into this ministry, if you go to our, our, our uh, web page, uh, there'll be a link to be able to sow into this ministry. Uh, we're not begging you. We're just putting it out there. If you so desire, and God puts it on your, in your heart to do so. We love you. We bless you. And we'll see you next time here at Kingdom Life Ministries International, Elizabethtown, Kentucky. That's see you next time.